How you guys doing today? It's Anthony Ganji. Welcome to another episode of Tear Talk. Guys, I got an email that was sent my way. Got an officer that just took a new bid. So what do I mean by bid? This officer is now assigned to a specific job. In this case, it will be five days a week. That means when he goes to work, he knows exactly where he is going to be. And in this case, it is going to be a specific housing unit. Now, granted, he just started this bid. And his main question right now is the officer that had the job before him was very lenient. And now this officer, the one that sent us the email, he's looking to enforce some of the rules. But unfortunately, he feels that he is dealing with entitled inmates, inmates that have been used, have been used to that level of leniency from the officer prior. And basically what he's trying to do is introduce his way, what his expectations are, and what's the best route to do that. Uh, Grant, there's going to be a great dialogue, but let me go over my sponsors first. So we have American Military University. If you guys get a chance, if you're looking to seek higher education, bring some experience into the classroom, please, please check out American Military University. They're very supportive of what we do in corrections, very supportive of what we do here in Tear Talk, and they're developing programs. It's an online school uh, that's developing some programs to kind of Work with us, those that work in corrections. So if you guys get a chance, please check it out. We also have Inmate Manipulation Decoded. Great book, guys. This book is used for training all across the country. Uh, this book can be found at Amazon, Barnes & Noble's. Link to that is in the description. But guys, if you get a chance, please check out this book. There's a lot of good advice that will help you in your career. And also from Blue 360 Media, my latest book, How to Succeed in Corrections. It's pretty cool, guys. There it is. It's a thick one. Could be used in training because, as you can see, you got your passages. And then people could write their notes right next to it. And then pretty much, you know, start their legacy. And hopefully one day they could pass that book. But, guys, it's available. If you buy it, I think it's $39.95. You also get uh, an ebook, So it's also available on your digital de device. Let me show you how this works. So I go to my ebook. So I have my iPhone. I just click onto the book. There it is. I don't know if you guys can see it, but uh, I don't know. It may be tough to see. There it goes. You know, and then you can basically pretty much pick whatever chapter you want to check out. There's one. Hey, look at that, guys. Boom. And you could just boop. And then it's also, they also have an app as well. Blue 360 Media also has an app. And that's also kind of breaks down the book chapter by chapter, but it's right here. Let me just go ahead and sign in. So if you guys get a chance, Blue 360 Media does have an app. Uh, you just got to download it like you would any other app. Let me go ahead and sign myself in and I'll show you how this works for the book. And again, this all this is all for $39.95. So it's a lot of, uh, a lot of stuff you get for $39.95, I think. But let me go ahead and sign myself in. There it is. And what you do is you go to the book that you're looking to read, which is my book right there. You hit read. Get a little, And then there's all the chapters that this book has. So, and they just kind of click on whatever the chapter is. And they can go ahead and read the chapter. So if you're teaching a class, your lesson's right there. So thank you, Blue 360 Media. It's pretty amazing. A lot of good information there. And I'm actually doing another book for them right now for rookie staff. Same format, passages, support uh, statements from other people in the profession. I'll probably have that out sometime next year. Uh, it's, I'm going to try to do about 50 passages, but I really want to do stuff that I know is not really being taught in the academy. So stuff that definitely, as I've worked 20, 21 years in, I'm going to look back and wonder, you know, what do I wish I would have known then? Okay. So real quick, guys. <clears throat> oh, guys, by the way, I, I forgot, I probably did say it, but the link to this book right here, is also in the description and feel free to check out the other stuff that blue 360 media has to offer. So this is tough because when you have an officer that is lenient, uh, that really doesn't uh, stress the rules or provide some order to the unit and now they're gone, you have to come in now and enforce the rules. <clears throat> so what you're basically doing is you're taking away this level of freedom 
that they believe that they've had for however long. And as we already know, guys, taking away something from an inmate is a lot harder to do because they are used to having these items. Or in this case here, they're used to having this level of freedom. So having said that, this is going to be tough because when you go in and you start enforcing the rules, these inmates may even have forgotten what those rules are. They've gotten used to the way things are that sometimes what happens is, is that even though the one officer was extremely lenient, these inmates may start to believe that that's the way it is. And that's what they're allowed to have. So you're definitely going to have to know what it is that you're trying to do policy by policy, because you're going to have to kind of reintroduce that to them. Because I know for a fact that if you have an officer that's letting inmates live for a while, sometimes these inmates start to believe that that's their right, that these are the things that they're allowed to do. And that's when you're going to have to come in and reintroduce them to the way things are supposed to be. Because again, they've been living uh, for quite some time uh, in a very lenient and forgiving atmosphere. Now, granted, guys, there's going to be resistance. So this is not a one and done thing. This is a battle. Because in the inmate's mind, they have a level of control. And now you have to now take back that control. And that's where it's not going to be easy. That's where it's going to become rocky. But once you start that path, when you start going to those inmates and saying, hey, this is my expectation for the unit. This is what I want. You cannot give up. You have to stay the course. You have to stay committed <clears throat> to what those expectations are that you are trying to get the inmates to follow. Because once you commit to it, once you go the distance, there is no turning back. I always tell people, even though this is not about a win-loss, because it's really not about a win-loss, but the point is the last thing you want to do is commit to this effort. And then, you know, if, if they unfortunately just become persistent in what their ways should be, and then eventually you just get tired and exhausted for just trying to push what is expected. And then you say, you know what, this ain't even worth it. I'm just going to go ahead and just give up because it's annoying that it's going to be a win for them. And you have to know when you start doing this because they have been entitled for so long. So you have to know that when you start to do this, when you go in and you're saying, okay, this is what I expect and this is how it's going to roll out and you commit to that and you are consistent with it, then you have to be ready that they are going to resist possibly rather aggressively. Because again, they've been so used to the more lenient, more forgiving environment. So it's going to be a little chaotic at first because they're going to go through a life adjustment technically. And the supervisors that are in your area, and if you have support staff, what it is, whatever it is, let them know what it is that you're going to do. Let them know, hey guys, this unit, this unit really wasn't running uh, the way I feel it should be ran uh, based on the expectations of what the agency expects from me, from policy and procedure, but more importantly, uh, from the inmate population. So I'm going to let you know I'm going to need some support because I'm going in. It's going to be a little bit chaotic because I'm going to have to readjust some things. And I don't think the inmates are going to like it. They either may actively resist. They may grieve. I mean, there's going to be a list of things that they're going to try to do not to comply with what it is because they've been used to the other way. And I'm going to need your support. And the supervisors and your support staff should understand that this is your unit. This is how you want it to be ran. And they should be fully supportive. So any effort that the inmates make to circumvent, the supervisors especially, the supervisors especially, be that brick wall. Don't let them go past you. Actually, let it bounce off you and go back to the officer who is trying to enforce those expectations. So if I was a supervisor, oh, you have a problem with uh, Officer Smith? Well, it sounds like Officer Smith's being rather reasonable. Uh, so go ahead. I would actually talk to Officer Smith because, you know, if that's what they're expecting, then I would go ahead and, uh, you know, work that out with Officer Smith.
Because once you open up that door for those inmates to circumvent, you're taking the power away from the officer to run that unit and be effective uh, in regards to the expectations that they are trying to lay out. But it's not going to be easy because, as I said, you are going to get that resistance. It's going to be very chaotic at first. It's kind of like going right through the storm. But you got to stay with it, especially at the very beginning because it's going to be rocky. Stay with it. Go through whatever it is you have to go through. Get that support and let your support know, hey, I need you to stay with me on this because it's going to be rocky. And then hopefully when it starts to clear out and the inmates know that they have nowhere else to go, there's no way they can escape anything and you're not backing down, you'll start to see it slow and subtle, but they'll start kind of falling into what it is that you're expecting that expecting of them. But again, it, it, it could take time. I wish I could tell you how long that's going to take, but it it's really based on your persistence and you know how your support staff can come in and make sure that these inmates who are looking to circumvent what you're trying to put out there basically have no other route to go. So again, you got to kind of close off all those routes, kind of get them to run around a little bit in a circle because that's where it's going to be most chaotic. And then eventually, hopefully they run out of breath and then you're able to now set the new standards in which you are trying to meet. And again, guys, you got to, if you're going to do this, and this is for the officer especially, once you commit to this, you're committed. Because the last thing you want, because this isn't a battle, this is long term. So this is a war at this point. So you don't want to lose this war. And I always I always tell people, you know, it's not really a win-loss uh, between us and the inmates. But in this case here, I'm going to say this is something that you're going to want to win. So you're going to have to get that support in play before you even start making this uh, move forward. Make sure you got the support because you want to cut off all exits. So basically what you're trying to do, those expectations, they're all going, they're going to be filtering through you. And then you have that control to kick it back. Hope this helps. Hope it's a good video. And as always, guys, don't forget, guys, get that new book. A lot of good advice in here. And as always, guys, stay safe. If you haven't, please subscribe, interact, engage. Come and hit that bell. That bell is going to notify you every time I post a video. And stay safe.